Welcome back to another Paragon Top 5 Plays. If you have any awesome clips, be sure to submit them to www.paragooners.com. A link will be in the description below. Also, hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying this series. Five. I definitely feel like supports don't get the credit they deserve, but that Hagger on Muriel makes the fifth spot his this week. Gideon is getting double teamed by the enemy Rampage and Murdoch, and he's in real trouble, but not to worry as Muriel comes in with an amazing orb throw to save Gideon. That orb is like a magnet the way it gravitated towards Gideon. Muriel isn't done yet, as it's now time for payback as she goes to the Murdoch, picking up a kill. Headshotter on Steel has just taken the enemy inhibitor and makes his way over to assist his allies. With the OP buff active, he's got some great damage output so he uses that to his advantage. He sees the enemy team grouped up and goes in for the slam dunk, catching three enemies. Gideon throws down his black hole and all four enemies go down instantly, leaving the core to be destroyed by Headshotter and his allies. A great combo by Steel and Gideon, one that is proving to be quite popular. Contesting the Orb Prime can be quite difficult, especially if your allies are scattered across the map. Engaging 1v5 is almost guaranteed death unless you're a Murloc. Lard 40 and his team are not giving up quite so easily. Sick Fury sits on the shadow pad waiting for the Orb Prime boss to get low and then with a perfectly aimed rock throw manages to last hit the Orb Prime boss, stealing the buff from the enemy team. Sick Fury's teammate Makomor or Murdoch comes in from behind as the enemy team raced after the rampage that stole their buff. He manages to catch the enemy's Murdoch in travel mode and they go back and forth dancing around each other's shots until Tamakumor lands the finishing shot. Tamakumor thinks about retreating but rampages other plans as he comes in to finish what Murdoch started. But a great dodge by Tamakumor as Rampage misses his rock. Rampage is backed up by Twimblots and Tamakumor could be in trouble here. He keeps his cool trying to put some distance between them. Tamakumor's team have deposited the Orb Prime and now Murdoch has a huge damage increase. He moves back and forth trying to dodge as many Twimblar shots as possible, even trying to ult the Rampage in the middle of the fight. He's now down to just 180 health but some great dodging as he evades most of Twimblar's shots and manages to kill him. The Rampage deals some damage but Tamakumor kills him before the Rampage lands the final blow. Andy Oji is trapped out of position at the All Prime drop off location. Feng Mao comes in to try and punish him, but Andy Oji lands a great knockback with Murdoch's shield. A Gideon joins in to help Feng Mao out, but Andy Oji keeps his cool as he focuses down the Feng Mao, managing to kill him but losing a lot of health in the process. Gideon manages to land only one shot, while Andy Oji finishes him off with just four. The enemy Murdoch comes in from behind, but Andy Oji lands a crit and then two more shots to the face and he's dead. Andy Oji decides that it's better to retreat now and recalls. Grux has other plans though, as he races in, Andy Yoji reacts quickly, roots him in travel mode. It's not enough though as Grux charges forward, pulls Murdoch towards him, but misses the perfect opportunity to kill him, and Grux goes down. Some great play by Andy Yoji. One. Jay Shreds on Decker is one support you do not want to mess with as he lands a perfect containment fence, trapping the enemy team in a Gideon black hole. Combined with a Murdoch and Rampage ult, there is little the enemy team can do as four of them go down and the Twin Blast has no option but to retreat. He even gets caught and killed. No mercy from Jay Shreds team. Let's take a better look at what exactly happened. A containment fence goes down and as the enemies try to back up, a slow bubble also goes down, combined with the pull from the Gideon's black hole, leaving the enemy heroes with little chance of escaping and no chance of survival. Congratulations to Jay Shreds for that great support play, combining a containment fence with a slow bubble field on top of a Gideon black hole. This week's bonus play comes from Mr. Sicko. His team are on the main screen while the enemy are in your top right. The enemy Rampage and Grux were pushing their inhibitor while Mr. Sicko and Grux and his allies go for the enemy tower. Both tower and inhibitor go down as the enemy Rampage starts to make his way to the enemy core. The blue team however are still trying to take down the enemy's inhibitor but it goes down relatively easy. Just as a side note, the orange team would have easily won but their Grux, Esteban57, decided to go for another inhibitor and doesn't even manage to get that, costing his team the game. 
The Rampage is desperately trying to destroy the blue team's core, but it's now 5v1 for a race to the finish line. <laughs> Both cores get destroyed at the exact same time, but Paragon declares the winner the blue team. An intensely close game, one that the orange team could have easily won had they not had two AFK players, but that doesn't take away from the intensity of this clip. I just feel really bad for the enemy rampage. That's all for this week's Paragon Top 5 Plays. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out last week's Top 5 Plays if you haven't already. Remember, you can submit your clips to www.paragooners.com. As always, a link will be in the description below.